Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will recall uh, some basic results from elementary number theory. So, we will record all the results that are needed uh, from elementary number theory in this lecture. So, let us start with uh, fixing some notation. So, this is something we already done, but anyway, let us recall. So, we denote natural numbers by n, so which consisting of all positive integers and then we denote ej plus by all non-negative integers including 0 and then we denote ej by set of all integers. So, this is 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 and so on. So, this is the set of all integers. This is the set of all natural numbers. So, this we call it non-negative integers. Okay. So, first we define uh, the divisibility. So, all of you must be knowing all this, but anyway it is good to recall. So, given two integers a b with b non 0. So, let us say given two integers a b with b non 0. So, we want to say that b divides a. So, when, when we can say b divides a. So, this is symbolically we write this b vertical line a. So, this should be re read b divides a. So, you say this if there exist an another integer q such that a equal to q b. So, this is the symbol that uh, we will be using always. Okay. So, now there are some elementary properties of this divisibility. I will list all these uh, properties. I will not uh, prove them. So, I will leave them as exercise. So, here is the exercise. So, these are all some elementary properties. You start with uh, 3 integers a, b, c such that a and b are both non-zero. So, let uh, a, b, c they are integers such that b and c both are non-zero. So, in one line we can write b a is non-zero. So, the first property if a divides b and b divides c. So, then one can conclude a divides c. The second property if a divides b and a divides c. So, then we can take any integral combination of b and c. So, that should be divided by a. So, then a divides b x plus c y for all x y integers and this can be extended to any finitely many uh, number of integers. So, maybe I will write it as a third. So, if a divides b i for i equal to 1 to k so, then if you take any integral leading combination of this b i, so then a divides summation x i b i for all x i in z for i equal to 1 to k. So, and one of the important property of this divisibility, if a divides 1, since 1 is being unit inside your set of integers. So, then this should immediately imply a is either plus or minus 1. Okay. So, from this you can conclude that if a divides b and b divides a, so then they differ by just this plus or minus 1. Okay. The another property if m is non-zero and a divides b, so, then 
we can take multiple of A and then multiple of B. So, then this M A should divide M B. So, these are all some elementary properties of uh, this divisibility. So, this we must have done it in the first course in elementary number theory. So, I am just recalling it here. So, now uh, we will actually see an important result that you prove in elementary number 3 called division algorithm. Okay. So, I will actually uh, give you a proof that is somewhat uh, more algebraic okay, in some sense that uses the, the coset property of uh, uh, the integers. Okay. So, let me first state the result and then I will give you the proof. Okay. So, here is the division algorithm. So, division algorithm has many different proofs. Okay. So, each proofs actually kind of uh, involves some properties of integers and natural numbers. Okay. So, and then so this particular proof I would say it is a very important uh, uh, proof that you will be this idea will be repeating again and again in both in group theory as well as ring theory. So, okay. So, what is division algorithm? You start with uh, two integers a b with uh, b being positive integer. Okay. So, then basically you want to divide a by b. So, then uh, then there will be a quotient and the remainder. Okay. The remainder you can always choose to be less than b. So, that is what division algorithm guarantees. So, then there exist unique q and r from z such that this a can be written as q b plus r with 0 less than or equal to r less than b. Okay. So, you divide this a by b then you get this quotient q and then this remainder r. So, this is called remainder sorry remainder and this is called quotient. Okay. And this, this are both these numbers are unique satisfying this property. So, the uniqueness is uh, fairly obvious. Okay. So, this is something I have done it in the earlier lecture, but I gave different proof for this fact, but here I am going to give another proof which actually kind of understands the coset uh, that you actually define using A and B. Okay. So, what is the idea of the proof? So, the idea of the proof to look at the following coset. Okay. So, this is something I already introduced in the previous lectures. Okay. So, what is the coset that we are interested in? So, you take this all possible combinations like this. Okay. Consider this yes. So, what is this yes? So, this yes is consisting of you start with A and then start adding and subtracting B. Okay. A plus B, A plus 2B and so on and then A minus B, A minus 2B and so on. So, indeed it is an infinite subset of integers. So, these are all lie inside each other. So, your moment thought will tell you that. So, all we do is we take A, we just add all multiples of B integral multiples of b. So, that is what we are doing. Okay. So, we added b, 2b and then minus b, minus 2b and so on. So, in particularly this s is same as a plus z times b or b, b z. Okay. So, this is recall this is exactly equal to a plus b x where x is coming from z. So, this, this is uh, coset with respect to this subgroup B, this is something uh, we have seen already. So, this set, so I will explain later why I want to call it as coset, but anyway this is set something I introduced already and then we, we, we saw that some arithmetic can be done between these sets. So, now if you take this set A plus B, okay. so this is possibly uh, it is actually consisting of infinitely many uh, integers. So, your moment thought can tell you that it will definitely have infinitely many positive and negative integers. Okay. 
So, I will leave it to you to check okay, this is something I will leave it to you to check uh, that S intersection N will be non empty okay, and it could be empty in only one case uh, when B is 0 and A is negative, but uh, to begin with we assume that B is already positive because B is positive. So, S intersection N must be non empty always. So, in particularly I we can talk about because this n with respect to the order that we have on, on n it is actually a well ordered set. Okay. So, n with respect to the order that we have is with respect to this, this is well ordered. So, what is the meaning of well ordered? So, given any non empty set, okay, if you start with A which is a non empty subset of n, then this A has minimum. So, there exist A in A such that this A is less than or equal to B for all B in capital A okay? and we can prove that this is unique such A exist. So, this is the property of uh, well ordered sets. Okay? Now, using this property you can see that uh, if you take this S intersection N as capital A this is a non empty subset of N. So, there exist some R okay inside this s intersection n and this r is actually smallest non negative integer in this set okay so this is the smallest non negative so okay so we can make it actually uh, because the remainder could be zero so in that case uh, we have to allow uh, 0. So, I can make uh, this n to be z plus okay? and it is not hard to replace this n with z plus. So, there is no harm. So, now with the, so now if we take uh, this s intersection z plus, so then you get this r which is the smallest non negative integer in this. So, this is the smallest non-negative integer in S intersection z plus. So, that is the property of the sum. So, then it is clear that there exists q such that r equal to a minus q b for some q inside z. Okay. So, that is more or less by definition because S is defined to be just A plus B z. So, now you have this R then it is clear that this is the R that we want. Okay. So, it is not hard to check this A is equal to Q B plus R and this R should satisfy this property. It should be less than B and it is non-negative. So, non-negative by definition and it is supposed to be less than B. Otherwise, you will be able to subtract B from R. So, that will give you contradiction to the choice of R. So, let us try to do, okay. suppose this does not happen if R is greater than or equal to B. So, then it is clear that R minus B, okay. so which is of the form A minus Q plus 1 B. So, this is still in S and this is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, but R minus B is strictly less than R which is a contradiction because R is the smallest non-negative integer inside S intersection S plus. So, that forces that this R is less than B. So, that means 0 less than or equal to R 0 less, less than B it is proved. Okay. So, the uniqueness of this R and Q it is uh, already proved in the previous lectures you can actually check uh, there and it is not that hard to prove. Okay, I will leave it as exercise. So, prove the uniqueness. So, prove the uniqueness of R and Q. Okay. So, now we have the division algorithm. This division algorithm is somewhat very powerful in order to compute what is called greatest common divisor. So, before actually getting into uh, that algorithm, let us first define what is this uh, GCD. Okay, GCD. So, this is here is the definition. So, GCD means greatest 
common divisor okay what is the meaning of gcd so you start with two integers not both of them are zero so let a b they are integers such that a b is not equal to 0 0 that means both are not 0. So, then the G C D of this uh, A and B. So, shortly it is denoted by G C D of A comma B. So, this is defined to be. So, this is defined to be the largest integers. So, integer d such that d device a and d device b. Okay. You look at all possible common devices and you pick the largest one. So, that is called greatest common device. Basically, you divide this word into two, you look for all common devices and then take the greatest among them. So, that is called greatest common device. So, we do not really define G C D of 0 comma 0 because that does not make any sense because any integer can divide 0 comma 0. So, there is no greatest among the common divisors of 0 comma 0. So, it is not defined. So, now here are some basic properties okay. this is something I will leave it to you to check. So, these are not very hard to check. So, the very first property so, the G C D of A comma B this must be always positive. Okay. So, you can easily prove that G C D of A comma B is same as G C D of the absolute value A and absolute value B which is also same as G C D of A comma minus A comma B and then G C D of A comma minus B and then G C D of minus a comma minus a comma minus b. So, the G C D of all these numbers are same this is something easy to verify and then if you take G C D between a comma 0. So, then that must be the absolute value of a. Similarly, uh, if b divides a if b divides a. So, then the G C D of a comma b must be the absolute value of b. So, G C D must be always positive. Okay. So, now uh, one of the important property of G C D. Okay. So, you can always write G C D of a comma b as integral combination of a and b. So, that is something I will prove. So, before that uh, let us again look at one more property of G C D. So, if a and b are integers not both are 0. So, then what one can prove if you compute G C D of A B then it is same as G C D of A plus B X comma B. So, this just uh, follows from the divisibility properties. Okay. Suppose if you call the G C D of A B as D and then if you call this G C D of A plus B X comma B to be D dash. So, then you can easily prove that D device A and D device B will imply D device A plus B X and D device B. So, that will force this D is less than or equal to D dash and similarly you can see that if, if D device A plus B X and D device B then D must divide A plus B X minus B X. So, that means D will divide this. Okay. So, that will force that d dash is less than or equal to d. Okay. Similarly, you can prove that d dash is less than or equal to d. So, that will imply d equal to d dash. Okay. So, these are all some elementary properties that is why I am not going into very much details. So, but this is one of the important property of G C D. So, if you take G C D of A B then that is same as G C D of any like this combination a plus b x comma b for any x in z. So, now using this so I will state a theorem. So, we will prove the following theorem which is important. So, let a b integers such that a comma b both are non zero 
okay. So, then there exist x y in e z such that this g c d of a b is given by a x plus b y okay. So, g c d can be always written as integral linear combination of a and b. So, that is what uh, this theorem says okay. So, this theorem can be proved in uh, two different ways. So, one can use uh, this Euclidean algorithm to compute GCD. So, that uses actually division algorithm okay. So, I will leave it to you to think about that. I will just uh, sketch how it works. So, this is called Euclid's, Euclid's algorithm to compute GCD. So, basically what you do? You repeatedly use division algorithm to obtain a series of equation as follows. You start with A and then you can write A as Q1 B plus R1. So, with this R1 being less than B. So, then you just repeat this with B and R1. So, B can be written as Q2 R1 plus R2 with 0 less than or equal to R2 less than R1. So, now note that the GCD of A comma B is same as GCD of this A minus Q1 B comma B okay, because I can take any combination here. So, if this is what this last thing says. I can take any A plus B x and I can still do not change the GCD. That means, GCD of A comma B is same as GCD of B comma R 1. Similarly, you can if you think about it, the GCD of B comma R 1 is replaced by GCD of R 1 comma R 2. Okay. So, every time when you actually apply this division algorithm, you replace the tuple and then you are actually somewhat bringing this B down. Okay. So, for example, so you started with the B and then you are going down to R 1. So, you start with this tuple A B and then you are going down to B comma R 1 where R 1 has smaller value than B. So, now you see that you also replace this with some new tuple. So, this R 1 now you divided by R 2. So, then this R 1 can be written as some Q 3 R 2 plus R 3. So, with this 0 less than or equal to R 3 less than R, R 2. So, then the GCD of R 1 comma R 2 will be same as GCD of R 2 comma R 3. So, every time what we do? We replace this number by something smaller. So, obviously, this uh, algorithm stops at some finitely many steps and then you exactly get some equation like R j minus 1 equal to some u j plus 1 R j. So, then the G C D of A B will be exactly equal to R j. Okay. So, now you know that this R j minus 1 will satisfy something like this R j minus 2 equal to q j R j minus 1 plus R j. So, with this 0 less than R j less than R j minus 1. Okay. So, now you, you can see that if you are interested in computing R j, R j is nothing but R j minus 2 minus Q j R j minus 1. So, using this replacing R j by R j minus 2 minus Q j R j minus 1 and then uh, replacing this uh, quantities back in the previous equation and so on, you will see that there will be some x and y such that rj will be equal to ax plus by. So, this is just the outline of Euclid's algorithm. So, basically every time if you are interested in computing GCD between a b, you replace this tuple a b by some new tuple b r 1 where the value of b actually goes down by r 1. 
okay without loss of generality you can assume a is greater than or equal to b otherwise uh, uh, yeah this is because gcd of ab is same as gcd of ba so this algorithm works fantastically and uh, this pro proved to be very nice algorithm to compute gcd okay so for example so here i will do one example so you can start with very large numbers but then uh, you if you use this division algorithm then quickly you will actually get into something very very small okay for example if you are interested in computing gcd of 841 and 160 so then what happens if you use this algorithm you can see that you write 841 as multiple of 160 so that will be 5 times 160 plus 41 so now you can see that the gcd of 841 160 went down to gcd of 160 comma 41 okay but again if you use the division algorithm for 160 and 41 then you can write this as 3 times 41 plus 3 37 so then now you can see that the gcd again went down to 41 sorry yeah 41 comma 37 so now you can again use the division algorithm so then this 41 can be written written as 37 plus 4 okay and then if you use 37 will be written as 9 into 4 plus 1 then 4 will be just 4 times 1 so that means the gcd of this is same as gcd of 37 comma 4 which is same as gcd of 9 comma sorry 4 comma 1 which is 1 okay so this is how you compute the gcd so quickly this uh, algorithm escalates and then it brings you down to small numbers so that you can actually compute this gcd so this proof of course very important proof uh, from the algorithmic point of view but from theoretical point of view so i will give you another proof which actually kind of uh, looks at all possible linear combinations of uh, a and b and then picks something uh, from that combination okay and then uh, the smallest possible positive integer in that combination will serve as your gcd okay so here is the second proof so what is this proof so this proof actually just to look at all possible combinations so take s to b basically a ej plus b ej so what is this this is ax plus by where xy comes from integers so your moment thought can tell you because both a and b are non zero if they are zero then s is zero okay so because one of them at least uh, non zero then you can see that this s must be infinite it it contains both uh, positive and negative integers okay i will leave it to you to check so in particularly what you can do you can actually uh, prove that s intersection n will be non empty okay so this is something i will leave it to you to check so you can check by for example case by case so the important point here this a ej plus b ej okay this is not some random subset of ej it is indeed a subgroup so this is something you can directly check so this is indeed subgroup of integers okay we have already seen what are all the subgroups of integers the subgroup of integers must be of the form d ej for some d okay so in particularly this also must be some d ej so that is the d that we are actually looking for so we always choose d to be positive integers so that it generates okay so okay so what is the d indeed the d is the smallest possible positive integer okay so then take d inside this n center section n so this is the smallest possible positive integer okay such a d exists because s intersection any subset of n n is well ordered so now by definition d can be written as a x not plus b y not for some x not y not inside integers 
okay. So, now we need to prove that uh, this D is indeed GCD, there are two things to prove it is the uh, largest common divisor, okay. It first of all common divisor and it actually actually largest among them. So, why it is common divisor? Let us prove D device A and then I will leave it to you to think about D device B. So, D suppose if you want to prove D device A, then the important thing to use is again use division algorithm, okay. Without div division algorithm, we cannot prove anything. So, to prove D device A. So, look at A equal to some Q D plus R using the division algorithm. So, it has enough to prove this R is 0. So, this R will satisfy the property that uh, it is less than D and greater than or equal to 0. So, now you can see that this R is nothing but A minus Q D. So, since A is inside your S okay, and Q D it is also inside your S. So, this combination should be inside your S. So, this is in S, this is in S. So, if you add them it should be in S, okay. This is the property of subgroup. So, that is what we are using now here. So, that means R is in S, but what is R? If you write R, this is 1 minus X naught times A minus B Y naught. So, which is inside S, okay. So, this R is smaller than D. So, but D is the smallest to positive integer possible. So, that forces that this R is 0, okay. So, that means D device A. So, similarly you can prove that D device B. Suppose if you have some other divisor, for example, if you take GCD of AB, so the GCD of AB it is the largest common divisor. So, it has to be greater than or equal to D, but D is actually combination of a and B. So, D equal to A x naught plus B y naught. So, that means the G C D of A B must divide this A x naught plus B y naught which is D. So, that will force that the G C D of A comma B is less than or equal to D. So, that means D must be equal to the G C D of A comma B, okay. So, this actually uh, gives another proof using the property that uh, it, this A z plus B z is nothing but a subgroup of z, okay. So, so this also gives us immediate corollary that uh, the greatest common divisor of A and B is the smallest positive integer which can be written as a z linear combination of A and B, okay. So, the first proof the Euclidic algorithm is more practical uh, algorithm. So, it gives you uh, algorithm to compute the GCD of A and B, but the second proof is more theoretical proof. It actually uses the correct property of this set A z plus B z in order to find out uh, the combination, okay. So, now it, it is not hard to generalize uh, GCD for any given finitely many number of uh, integers, not all of them 0. So, you can talk about GCD of A1, etc., AN, and then I will leave it to you to actually prove that uh, given this A1, etc., AN, the GCD. So, then there will be a combination like this. <coughs> there exists Xi such that a 1 x 1 plus x etcetera a n x 1 will be the G C D of this. And generalizing other properties of G C D to this uh, finitely many integers is not very hard. I will leave it to you to think about it, okay. So, I will continue with uh, 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 this again elementary property of uh, elementary uh, number theory results in the next lecture and then <coughs> slowly we will move to like cyclic groups and uh, other finite abelian groups. Okay, I will stop here, we are running out of time, thanks.